Hello, Algebra 1 honors. Well, today, uh, AMI day number uh, four, we only got one more left that we can do. Anyway, um, today we're going to be looking at uh, section 7.2, and we're going to multiply polynomials. And um, uh, I'm basically, we're going to get to use one uh, property today, um, but we're going to get to look at things in, in a few different kind of methods for, for doing this property. So it's, it's going to be kind of an interesting day. Um, let, let's get some, some information down. Uh, the property we're going to use today is the distributive property. And the distributive property is most often used. But we got to make sure when we multiply polynomials, we got to make sure to combine like terms. And you know what, that's, that's only if needed, because you don't always have to combine like terms, as it turns out. Oh, and this comes after you multiply. Okay, so like in 7.1, 7 7.1 we we learned out we learned what polynomials are, but then we also um, added them and subtracted them. And when you're adding and subtracting polynomials, they have to be like terms. And so we combine like terms. We added them if they had the same um, variable component. And then um, with multiplying polynomials, it's different. You're multiplying. And so what you're going to do is you're going to do the the distributive property. So let's take a look at an example here. Uh, our instructions are to simplify. And let's look at a monomial times, um, oh, let's go, let's go big here. Let's go 2x to the third minus x squared, so binomial, plus 4x trinomial. And then we're going to add a, a constant here to make four terms. So we've got a... Uh, single term times four terms. Notice um, these cannot be, um, there's no like terms in here. This can't be simplified um, in the parentheses. But because there's no um, addition or subtraction right here and it's butted right against that, that parentheses, we're going to distribute. And what we got to be careful with is when we distribute, we got to make sure that this monomial multiplies with every term. And we also need to be careful with our, um, when we multiply and we've got exponents, we're going to have some properties of exponents to, to worry about as well. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead here. 3x squared times 2x to the third. The 3 and the 2 will simplify to make 6. But what is x squared times x to the third? Well, when the bases are the same, you add the exponents. And then we continue multiplying. 3x squared times negative x squared. Well, that's going to be negative 3x. And then add the exponents to the fourth. And 3x squared times 4x. Well, you can simplify the 3 and the 4 to make 12. And then x squared times x. Think of it as having a little 1 there. Add the exponents. x to the third. And then finally, we multiply this monomial times our constant here, and we get negative 9, and then the x squared just comes along for the ride there. And you always want to double check, now that we've multiplied, do we have any like terms that we need to combine? We sure don't. Is it written in standard form? Standard form has the, the term with the highest degree first, and then preceding degrees should be lower at each interval. So yeah, it looks looks good. Let's box that up. Okay, so that was a monomial times four terms. What you commonly see in science and, and math 
is um, a binomial times a binomial. This one's real common. And you're, we're, we're going to work with, with these quite a bit. Um, oftentimes when you have a, well, yeah, when, whenever you have a, a degree of, of one for each of your binomials, when you multiply it together, it's, it's called a, a quadrinomial. Um, and, and there's, there's lots of, um, ways to, to, I'm sorry, not a quadrinomial. It's called a quadratic. And there, there's lots of different methods to solve quadratics. And you're, you're going to learn about those when we, and we, uh, we're going to do some factoring with quadratics, some interesting things. But anyway, our instructions right now are to simplify. Now, notice again, um, this isn't an addition problem because they'd have a plus sign there. It isn't a subtraction problem because they'd have a minus sign there. When there's nothing in between and those, those, uh, when there's nothing in between, you're, you're multiplying. And again, um, what you can do is you're going to distribute. But here's the thing. You've got two terms. So what happens is each term has to multiply with everything in the other uh, polynomial. So the x needs to multiply with the 2x to get 2x squared. The x needs to multiply with the negative 1 to get negative 1x. But then you also have to distribute the 4. It has to multiply with this polynomial as well. And when you do that, you'll get 8x minus 4. Now, at this point, you have some uh, like terms, don't you, in the middle here? Think of this as a negative 1x plus an 8x. And yeah, our final answer is going to be 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Now, um, it turns out, and yeah, this is a quadratic. It turns out if you've got a degree 2... It's called a, a quadratic, um, and yeah, quadratics are, are pretty helpful. Um, the, that gravity equation that I've told you about, it's a quadratic, so that, that's, that's why these are pretty common, I think. But um, a lot of, a lot of there, there's some multiple ways to do this. I think it's, it's nice to just remember everything's got to multiply with everything. You've got to, got to do your distribution. But... Um, binomials times binomials are so common that there's other patterns that people like to remember. And so um, some people, and you'll, you'll hear this in your life, uh, in your math, math uh, careers, um, you'll hear the word FOIL. And so FOIL is another way to multiply out uh, a binomial times a binomial. And so what it says to do is to do front times front. That's what the F stands for, front times front, outer times outer, which gets you that. Inner times inner, get you that. And last times last. So, you know, if you want to remember FOIL for a binomial times a binomial, go for it. But um, distribution gets you there as well. Okay, let's do another one here. Let me make sure I'm recording. Okay, good deal, good deal. Um... Let's do, oh, okay, let's do a trinomial multiplied with a binomial. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my preferences here. Um, whenever I have a trinomial multiplying with um, a binomial or bigger, uh, I always use something called a box. Well, I call it a box method. I think the book calls it multiplying using a table. I, that's probably the way I should say it, but I don't know. I just remember it as a box method. So, um, and the reason I do that is because we're going to have a lot of arrows going on here. Uh, you can think of it as every term here has to multiply with this binomial, or you can think of it as every term here needs to multiply with this trinomial. Either way will get you there. But it's a lot of multiplying. It's a lot of arrows, okay? So we'll go ahead and do it that way. But um, I'm also going to show you a box method that I, I really like. I, I don't use it for simpler multiplying. But when I have three terms or, or more multiplied with, 
with two terms or more, then I, I, I like to do a box method. Okay, so let, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and do our distribution method. So we gotta do a squared times 2a is 2a to the third. a squared times 3 is 3a squared. Then I also gotta multiply the 3a. 3a times 2a is 6a squared. 3a times 3 is 9a. And then I also get to multiply the negative 4 and get negative 8a and negative 12. Now, by the way, I think this is the first time we, we've seen this. When it was minus 4, what did I multiply by? That's right. I multiplied by a negative 4. Okay, think of it as a negative 4 that gets distributed. And then uh, after you do your distribution, you always want to check to see if you've got any um, like terms that need to simplify. And yeah, we've got a couple sets, don't we? Okay, so our answer is 2a to the third plus 9a squared plus a or 1a minus 12. Okay. And, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm always a little nervous. Like, did I did I multiply everything out? Okay, I'm pretty sure I did. But let me show you the box method real quick. Do this same problem. Uh, what you do is you draw a box. And you, you put one of the polynomials along the top. I'm going to go a squared, 3a, negative 4. And then the other polynomial along the left-hand side, so 2a and 3. So notice I'm just writing each term. Then what you do is you, you split up your box into segments like this, sections. And here's why I like the box method. I know I'm done multiplying when I filled in the box, okay? It's pretty, pretty good. It's a, it's a good organization way of doing things. There's also an additional interesting benefit. It turns out that as long as you've got these things written in standard form, you know, receding uh, exponents as you go along, um, like terms are almost always on these diagonals here. So it's kind of a good way to double check. And notice, so we're gonna have 2a to the third. Add those together, you get 9a squared. Add these together, a, and then you got your minus 12. So it's another way to multiply, multiplying with using a table. Heck, if you want to use a table on everything, you can use a table on everything. It's up to you. Okay, um, now what's kind of cool about this is now that we're doing some multiplying, um, we can kind of make things interesting. Let's, let's bring a little bit of uh, geometry into our lesson here. Um, our instructions are write an expression for the area. And we're going to have, oh, this is kind of funny. Um, we're going to have a shape that looks like this. Um, I, I don't know that we've talked about this, but these tick marks, since these have the same number of tick marks, it means these sides are the same measure. Since these have the same number of tick marks, they have the same measure. We've got four right angles here. What kind of shape is this? Yes, yeah, right. It's a, it's a rectangle. And if it says write an expression for the area, oh, we, we're given some information. We're given a 2x plus 6. And we're given that this length is x plus 8. And believe it or not, th there are plenty of real-world applications where this happens. Um, yeah, anyway. So to write an expression for the area, how, how do you find the area of a rectangle? You're going to multiply. So um, gosh, if you wanted to, you could write that x and that 8 a little differently. And you could do the box method, couldn't you? But go ahead and... Um, Write these, uh, set these up, multiply it out. You want to pause the video for a second while you multiply it out, and then uh, unpause it to check your answer. All right, so you should have gotten 2x squared 
plus 22x plus 48. All right. Now, um, I do want you to be able to handle some other area problems. So uh, I'll just give you a quick, um, you, you can jot these down if you want. But uh, what if you have a triangle? Okay, you might have a triangle. And, it, and maybe it has the, the same measurements, x plus 8 and 2x plus 6. Okay, but if you have a triangle, this happens to be a right triangle. I want you to realize that's half of a rectangle, isn't it? Half of a rectangle. So it turns out you would just cut, <laughs> you would multiply them together, but then multiply by a half. So one half base times height. So this was, this was length times width. And for area of a triangle, it's one half base times height. But base times height is the same thing as length times width. So yeah, what you would end up doing is multiplying them together, but then cut everything in half. So it would be x squared plus 11x plus 24 would be the answer for, for the area for that shape. Also, triangles are, are kind of interesting. You could also have a triangle where it's not a right triangle, okay? Maybe it's some other kind of kind of weird triangle. But it still has a base of 2x plus 6. But then the height would have to be like in the middle somewhere. And the height, they might tell you, is x plus 8. Well, it's a triangle, and it's always going to be 1 half base times height. It turns out if you kind of like filled in the, the rest of this, the the you got half of it covered half of the area so anyway it would end up being the same sort of thing so um some exciting application sort of stuff all right so uh let's go ahead and um take a look here all right uh oh this will be fun this will be fun okay let's let's mix multiplication, addition, and subtraction into one problem. Okay, let's go. t times 2t minus 3 plus t minus 3 times t plus 3. All right. So what we got to remember is um, there's some order of operations that we want to be aware of. Um, PEMDAS, right? First thing you want to do is look at your parentheses, see if there, you can simplify anything inside the parentheses. Nothing doing, no like terms. But then we've got exponents, no exponents to deal with. Uh, but then we've got multiplication. So what I'm getting at is we're going to do some multiplying here. We're going to do some multiplying here. And then the last thing we're going to do is add, add our results together. So let's distribute that t, 2t squared minus 3t plus, I'm just bringing that down, and then we're going to multiply this out. Now, here's what's kind of cool. Uh, t times t, well, yeah, we'll just write this out. t squared plus 3t, so distribute, distribute. We're also going to distribute the negative 3, negative 3t, negative 9. Okay, so now we're going to um, combine like terms here. We've multiplied everything out. We're adding and so we just need to combine like terms. Let's start with the highest degree term to make sure it's in standard form. What's 2t squared plus t squared? That's right, 3t squared. And I just like to mark them out to show that, that I've uh, dealt with them already. Okay, now this is kind of interesting. It turns out whenever you've got a, um, whenever you're multiplying a binomial with a binomial and they're the same, but one's addition, one's subtraction. I believe this is called the sum and difference property. But uh, what, what happens is, is anytime that happens, exactly the same, just one's positive, one's negative. When you multiply it out, check out what happened to the middle terms. They are gone, aren't they? They're gone. So anyway, what we actually have next is this minus 3t right there. And then finally, the minus 9. All right, this is exciting times. We're getting into some interesting stuff. Um, so page, uh, oh gosh, what, what is it here? It looks like, looks like I might have changed the assignment a little bit. 
it. I'm just wanting to make sure I don't overwhelm you. Okay. Uh, I think, I think we're just going to go for this. Uh, oh, whoops. Page 369. Numbers. 1 through 43 odd. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, you could do every other odd, couldn't you? Oh, and by the way, do whichever method you want. Table. Um, distribution, do whatever. Um, but yeah, you just want to get some practice and check those answers. Have a great day.